Hi, I'm Mano Marks, and it's my pleasure today to uh, introduce Bjorn Sandik. He is a project manager at the United Nations Association of Norway. Uh, he's got a master's in uh, science in uh, geographic information systems from the University of Edinburgh, and he's a web developer and author of the thematic mapping blog. And he is here today to talk about using KML for thematic mapping and explain how KML documents can be generated on the fly using the now open source thematic mapping engine. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Manu and Michael for inviting me all the way from Norway. It's nice to be here. I guess it's 20 degrees warmer than in Oslo before I left. Um, I'm going to give this presentation and I will focus on uh, how KML can be used for thematic mapping. And um, so I will show you different uh, techniques of how, how you can use the thematic mapping techniques in KML. And I will also show how you can use the thematic mapping engine, which, as you said, which is now open source to generate this uh, on the fly in a web browser. And I also want to talk about some Google Earth issues, some improvements I would like to suggest so it could be more easy to use for thematic mapping. Um, I will start with a common thematic mapping technique called proportional symbols. And uh, I've identified three different ways of making these symbols in KML. And the first one is to use the image icons to scale them. And um, this is the technique, it's my favorite, and I think it's the most useful way of making proportional symbols in KML. Uh, this one just shows with the def default push pins. And here they are scaled, so they are proportional to the population in each country. Uh, the background here is the NASA city lights. And um, this, this is one thing I like with using GeoBrowser for thematic mapping is that you are able to combine raster data and vector data very easily. Um, yes. So what you can do is that you can just uh, reference another image uh, and then scale them according to, to a numerical or a statistical value. So basically this can be any image. So you can have geometric images or they can be pictographic. KML uh, also has the possibility to colorize the image icons and that is also very good for thematic mapping. So here that it c you could represent two different vari variables but here this, the same variables are represented by both color and scale. So what basically what I've done is just to make a white circle on a transparent background and then they are scaled and colorized in KML directly. So this is just a short uh, KML of how it's done. So the symbol is sorry, referenced in a shared style and then they are colorized and scaled for each place mark or each country. There is one problem with this in Google Earth and that is the a problem of, uh, that the size is affected by viewport and that is the reason is that there are two different ways of changing the size of the Earth. You can either zoom in and out or you can actually change the size of the window and I can give you an example. So if I'm zooming in and out, you will see the, the size is adjusting. But if I'm changing the size of the window, you will see they maintain their size, all the icons. And I'm not sure if there is a special reason for this behavior or if it's uh, like a bug. But th th this is a problem, especially with the new Google Earth plugin, because very often you won't use the whole screen to show the maps and you will just use like a, in, a, in a frame or something. 
and then you can't really you don't really know how big the icons will show up on the screen Uh, another problem is with uh, Google Maps. If you want to use these techniques to visualize the KML in Google Maps, uh, Google Maps only it has, it has a fixed size for all the icons, so they won't be scaled, and you're not able to colorize them either. So basically, this technique only works so far in, in Google Earth. The other technique is to actually draw the polygons using the KML polygon element. So basically, what I'm doing here is to calculate the latitude and longitude point that makes up a circle. And this is done through a function, so by changing the number of points, as you can see here in the bottom, you can also change the, the shape of the symbol. So this sort of works. They, there is a problem. What I like with the other image icons technique is that the icons are always facing the user, but here they are more like lying on the ground, and especially in the 3D interface, it's, it's really hard for the user to compare different countries when they are seen in perspective. Um, and it's, the, another thing is that it's, I think it's probably the most, com most complicated way of drawing a circle is this function, because basically for every single circle you have to calculate all the latitude and longitude points to make up the circle. So one improvement to KML could, for example, this could be done with one line of SVG, for example, could be to add support for this directly in, in KML. Uh, the good thing of this technique is that this one, even though it's not so good in Google Earth, it works very well on Google Maps. So the squares here, they show up as true squares, while in, on Google Earth they will kind of get this good because of the perspective. Uh, the third technique I'm looking at is to uh, use the collada objects or models to make proportional symbols. These are normally used like for the cities and buildings, but since you have, you have the possibility to scale these models, you can also use them for thematic mapping. So this is an example of population shown as cubes. So here I'm using volume as the thematic mapping parameter. Another one, you, of course you can have every model. So this was downloaded from uh, Google Warehouse and then scaled. So this is showing the number of mobile phone subscribers. Uh, one difficult thing about using the Coladas is that it's, it's more difficult for the user to compare 3D symbols, especially when they are also in perspective. So, and uh, one missing feature is the possibility to be actually be able to click on the models to get the value. So far you can only click on the image icons and the polygons, but that will be a nice like extension to have. So this is basically how it's done. It's the, I import the model into SketchUp and then they are positioned and also scaled. So all, this, all the different uh, objects will have the same scale. And then I also give them a default color and by doing that I'm able to change the color later on when I generate the maps. Because Collada is also an XML format so I can actually read it into memory, change the color and then save it to the set files to do that on the fly. Okay, so that was the proportional symbols. Uh, the next one popular uh, thematic mapping technique is to use chart maps. Um, KML has no support for charts uh, natively, but what's very good is that you have the, the Google Chart API, and that is it's quite easy to embed or include charts from the API into the KML file. So that's what I've been doing here. Uh, the size of the charts is still proportional to the total population while the charts themselves, they show the age distribution for each country. And the charts can also be included in the, in the balloon. So another example with the bar charts. 
so which is good to use to show change over time. So this shows the declining infant mortality rate for African countries. Uh, a good thing I like with, um, with KML is the possibility to have extended data. And that is especially good for the balloon style where you can reference these extended data. It's a much more like cleaner way of making these types of maps. So that I would also like as an extension that you could actually use this extended data within the play whole place mark, not only within the balloon style. It would be much easier to make kind of make these maps and easier for people to kind of understand what's actually is happening here. Okay, the next technique is choroplats. It's probably the most used and misused thematic mapping technique. Um, you will see lots of examples of choroplats on the web also for KML. Um, you will also see here that they have like a, a color legend. So this thematic mapping engine is also able to make the color legends on the fly. We'll show you later on how this is achieved. Uh, another technique is related to the choroplat, where you, instead of using color, you use the height of the polygons. Um, so I was able to do this by using extruded polygons, which is supported in, in KML. So here the height is the proportional to the statistical value. So this map is showing the infant mortality rate in Africa. What I think is uh, improving the view for the user is to add color as well. Again, this could be like a different variable, but I think the best thing is not to, to mix when you use these prism maps. So actually it's showing the same variables. Another example, this is showing the uh, population in municipalities in Norway. So you will see Oslo here, the capital. So these techniques can be used on all scales, on the whole globe and also. The problem with the prism maps is this holes, polygon holes. And the reason is that if you have a polygon on the ground, you have an attribute called the clamp to ground. So it's actually following the surface of the earth, the great circle. But when you extrude polygons, you don't have such an option. So only the um, edges <laughs> of the polygons are extruded, but not the interior. So when some countries have like a low statistical value, they will have a low altitude value, and these holes will appear. So this one is just a suggestion of how this could be solved in KML. Then instead of uh, specifying the altitude for each vertex of the polygon, you could have another attribute where you only specify the altitude once, and then the whole polygons will be extruded to that altitude. And then you could also have an uh, attribute, for example, called clamp to altitude, so the whole polygon will actually like follow the great circle. The next technique is similar to the um, Prism maps, but this is using bars instead. So here I'm combining the, reg the technique for the regular polygons and adding the height attribute. So this one is showing the number of internet users per 100 population. Um, what's possible with the bars is that you can actually use show two different variables. A problem with this is that there is a lot of countries in Europe, so you get like a, a lot of attention towards Europe. Because even though it's a small country and with a tiny population, you will, might still have like a big bar. So what you can do is to have population as the radius or the diameter of the bar and then have the height and here also the color to show the statistical value. The last technique I will present is animated maps. And here I'm using the, 
quite simple but very powerful KML time primitives to make thematic maps. So I will show you a few examples. So this one is one example with the PRISM map. So this is the infant mortality rate in 1960, shown on this map. So by dragging this slider, you can see how the infant mortality rate is declining until 2005. And I think this is a, it's a quite nice way of doing it. You could do the same only with color, but it's easier for the eye to spot changes when you use height and color. Uh, another example is again with the mobile phones. So if I zoom into this one starts in 1980 I know you will see tiny mobile phone in in Finland. <laughs> and also here you can see the how it's changing. Scandinavia is quite good in the beginning of the 1980s. And then it's really exploding across Europe. So we'll have this view in 2005. So the highest number now of, of mobile phone users, this is not per like per population is not standardized, this in total numbers is now in in China. And then United States number two. Okay, so that was the techniques. Um I figured out when I was working on these techniques that it was quite complicated to create these maps. Uh, I did this programmatically in using PHP to generate the KML files. So what I thought was that it would be much easier if this could be done in an easy to use web interface for the user. So that's why I created a thematic mapping engine which was open source this, this Monday. So it's available now on the web under a GPL license. Um, I will give you a short demonstration. Um, there are th two ways of using this engine. You could either use it as in a web interface or you can use it in a, as an API, which I will show later. So this is the web interface. So what you can do is that you can select a statistical indicator. So I can, for example, take the infant mortality rate again and then select the year you want to show and then you can uh, choose one of the techniques. So all of the techniques I've shown are here except the chart maps is not yet available. So I will take the prism. You can set the maximum height of the prism and you can select the colors you would like to do, use. The color scale by the entering the start and the end color. And you can also choose between different classifications for the data. So I will use equal intervals, five classes, and I would also like to show the values and the names of the countries on the top of the prism. So you can use, do like this, and what was great when I was working on this for my thesis was that you, we got the Google Earth API back in June. So, and that was very nice because then you didn't have to switch between two applications. You can actually see the data right away in the browser. So if you click preview, it will make the KML in the background on the server and then show it instantly in the browser. And if you zoom in here, you will also see like the, the names and the values. So now I'm just waiting for the Google Earth API to support the time slider. It's, I don't think it's you're not yet supporting it. So f to show the time animation, you have to download to 
to Google Earth instead. So that's another option. You can just click on this and it will open and download the KML file. <coughs> So basically, on a high level, uh, this engine, this is how it works. So it takes statistical data, and it needs the border or the features, and it needs a set of parameters of how the map is going to be. And then all this is fe fed into the thematic mapping engine, and then it returns a KMSET file, which is then delivered back to the browser. Uh, so far, there are two ways of... Uh, interacting with the engine. You could either use the web interface or you can access this through a, as a PHP API. So if you have a PHP application, you can uh, use the engine and use it with your own data, for example. And one possible extension would, may, would be to make this as, as a web service. So you could do this directly on the, on the internet by passing the data to a web service. Just click through this. Uh, so the web interface uses Ajax and JSON techniques to kind of have this um, rich uh, interface. So it starts by just asking for all the statistical indicators, and then it's delivered back to the browser. And then when the user selects one indicator, it asks for all the available years. And then after, when the user uh, pushed the submit button, uh, all the parameters are sent to the server. And then the link to the KML file is returned to the browser. And if the Google Earth API is used, uh, it just instantly loads the, the KML file. And this is what's happening on the server. There is a form handler that communicates with the browser. And then I have divided into two classes so you could extend it more easily to and add other data sources. So all the data are fetched from, so today from a MySQL database. But by changing this class, you can, as long as the data is in the same format, you could easily tie it into another data source. So the first thing is that it, it asks for all the data it needs to make the map, and then the parameter, thematic mapping parameters, and the data are handed over to the engine, which then stores the KMSET file on the, the file server. So this is an example of how we can use the API. So this is actually all the code required to make a Coroplet map with a legend and title and everything. So basically what you do is to include the two classes and then you, this is the uh, a number for identifier for the indicator and the year. And then you add the parameters of how you want the map to be. And then you are asking for the map here by passing the, the data store and the parameters. I will not go into detail, but this is, um, this one is, showing how the structure of the KML is, how it's, it's made. So basically, it, takes to make, it makes the, all the shared styles first for each thematic mapping technique. And then it's two loops. Uh, one, the outermost loop is for each year, and the innermost loop is for each feature and country. And then it adds a place mark for each country in the, in the inner loop. So this is just how it's, it's structured. Uh, the legends, that was a, a challenge because KML has no support for HTML overlays. It's only support images. So what I had to do is to generate on the fly a PNG image on the server. So then I used the GD uh, open source library to make these legends and then packed it with the, with the other files in the, in the KM set. So this is uh, my suggestions for how Google Earth could be improved. Um, the first thing is the icon size of the different viewports that I demonstrate. 
Um, I'm not sure if there is a special reason for this behavior or if it's possible to, to be solved. Uh, the another one is that it's, it's really important for thematic maps for the user to be able to assess or to find, see the value of the symbol. So it's crucial that the user can actually click on the symbol and then see the value behind that symbol. And so far it's, it's only really working for uh, the image icons. You can click on the polygons but you need to press the control button and I don't think like the many users really know about it. And also they had a problem with the extruded polygons. If you click on them, it's not, you can't click on like click on the wall or click on the roof of the polygon. It will only identify the click on the ground. So it's really hard to be able to click correctly on the prism. And the same with the Colada models. It would be really great if you could actually click on the, on the model and then open the, the balloon as, as with an icon. Um, another suggestion is to have more base maps because for thematic maps it's, it's really important that the symbols are in focus and the default satellite imagery it's, it's very busy in a way. Uh, so it's, it's kind of hard, it's not a big contrast between the background and the symbols. So what I did here was to use the NASA uh, city lights. So it, what would be nice is to maybe to have a few more options and maybe some imagery that is not so, for example, the one you have for Google Maps for, for topography uh, is much better to use for thematic maps than the satellite imagery. And lastly, it would be nice if you could have maybe, for example, a Google Agent API, like you have the Google Chart API. So as long as you, you have to, as long as you, there is no KML support for HTML overlays, it would be nice if you could do this as a service as with Google Chart API to, to generate legends on the fly. It will be much easier for the, for the users. I will show you one more application that is called the Earth Atlas, which is also available uh, for download, open source. And I think that's a great thing with the new Google Earth uh, API is that you are able to build your own mapping interface. And you have much more control, for example, when you just give the KML file to the user, you, kind of, you, are, you, you can't really guide the user in Google Earth in an easy way. So what I've done here is to kind of make a little Google Earth-like interface in the browser using a library called Ext. So here you will see you will have the possibility to open and close and have various options here. So you can, for example, select infant mortality right, uh, right here in the browser. And you can also choose between different backgrounds. So you have the Earth city lights here. It's loading. I don't think that's working now. And you also have access to all the Google Earth functionality. So you can turn on and on borders and you have the various options here on top. So it's very easy for the user to, to have access to the Google Earth API. Okay, here it's coming. Okay, that was all, but we'll have some time for if there is any questions. Pardon? There is a problem here because it's kind of, what I'm actually doing is to give the cartographic toolbox to the user. So in a way I'm, I'm kind of expecting the user, that the user is knowing what he or she is doing. So, yeah. 
So some of the indicators that are available are normalized and others are not. So I'm, I'm in a way, I'm, I'm kind of sub suggesting, I, I'm expecting the user to know what will be a correct view or not. Hmm. Is more than the other. Um, I think the mostly <coughs> popular one, but also misused, is the Coroplat. Uh, when I had presented this on the blog, I think I got like the most attention on the Prism maps. People liked that that map, but the, that was also this is also the techniques were also criticized, especially the the Prism maps and maybe also the Colada objects especially because this is done in a 3D interface and you have the problem that it's not only the size of the symbol, it's not only the, um, the statistical value that is affecting the size of the symbol, it's also the distance from uh, the viewpoint. So if it's further away, the symbols will be smaller. But that's, that's a good thing about the image icons because they're not affected by perspectives. So when you have these circles that I showed you, they will have the same size. Uh, when when they're visualized. What I mean by misused? Um, especially it's also like a problem with normalization uh, and other issues. For example, um, a, a, a large country will have a lot of focus because it's like taking a lot of space <laughs> on the screen. Uh, and b by, but if you, for example, use a proportional symbol, and especially if it's also, uh, you had these techniques with the bars, where you could have the radius or the, or the diameter showing the population, you will have a more correct view. Uh. Hmm? <laughs> um, right now I have not yet decided what to do uh, and it's also like a matter of time and finance how much I will continue on my, my, what I like the most is to actually make the visualizations uh, more than the code behind so I think it will be I would let that give that task to someone else maybe to make this as a web service hmm. Mm. Yeah, I forgot to mention all the data is from the UN, UN data portal that was just launched back in February and um, it's a great service but they, they don't have any visualization capabilities but you can download the data in an XML format so I just wrote the script where I uploaded this data to the MySQL database. Um, so basically, that's what I'm doing. Been doing. Mm -hmm. um, it's not too difficult. It's uh, the it's explained in the documentation. But basically, what the script, the, this data connector is doing is that it's querying the database and then it's making an associative array of the data. So as long as if you write another script and just returns the same array of data, you can feed it into the engine and it, it shouldn't complain. <laughs> um, yeah, I know Google loves Python more than PHP. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's, this is about maybe 1,500 lines of code. Hmm. Yeah, the source is available, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the main reason for having GPL is that I'm using the ext JavaScript library and that is GPL licensed. So in a way to be able to use that one, I had to choose the same license. 
but it would be possible to choose another license for the server part of the so if you're not using the web interface but only the API PHP API but I've, for simplicity I decided to, to have the same license mm -hmm. that KML supports I think it's a lot it's it's not really tailored towards thematic mapping in, and thematic mapping is is not mentioned in the in the in the standard document but there are some flexible structures that you are able to use but still it's quite complicated and it's a little bit especially how everything is is mixed together with the styles and the attributes and the data so it would be much cleaner, for example, because you have to give an altitude in meters uh, for, for the prism maps. It would be much better if you have a more flexible structure so you could store the data and maybe the connections between the data and the height, for example, separately. Uh, so I think there is really a lot of uh, improvements. But what I like about KML, it's quite simple and e efficient to use. So. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what, what what would be the best way to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need different data. I haven't looked uh, a lot into that issue, but you have like other thematic mapping te techniques for that, like the asymmetric maps. Where you, where you don't have contrary regions, but you have regions following the data themselves. And, yeah, so, and it is possible, but then you need, because what I, basically what I need is to have, here I've used all the country borders, so then you need uh, the boundary data to be able to do it. What many people do is they just uh, make raster tiles, for example, because that you can do, do for everything. But I like, especially if, if it's improved that you can actually click on all the elements, I think use the vector features of KML is much more efficient because the user can interact with the, with the maps in, in a different way.